You have one more night, right? We just went to Brazil and uh, oh. Oh. did not wear shorts. Didn't wear shorts. Oh, oh. all right. <laughs> not <Okay>. stupid us. <laughs> leave it to, to the two of us. Yeah. How are you liking Seattle? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I've been here one other time, um, and I got to walk a little bit yesterday, and it's beautiful. The weather's great. I was like, look out. Got to love yeah. the weather. Great today, so. You've got to love the weather. Uh, uh, my brother went to uh, Puget Sound. Oh, so, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've come through quite a bit. Okay, okay. awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess should we start? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank awesome. you so much for meeting with us. Yeah. Congrats yeah. on the new season. Thank, yes. nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we can just get started yeah. here. Um, I'm into it. Yeah, so my our first question is for Ruby. Um, what I'm wondering is, how did you react to the writer's decision to make you a coop by blood? I know. It was <laughs> definitely, I was like a... Well, I did read it like four times just to make sure that it was like in my brain. And then I called Gary immediately. I called Gary. I was like, hey, this is what they're thinking. Just FYI. I gave him a heads up. And uh, yeah, we both were like talking through just kind of like what does it mean for not only just JJ, but also Luke. And um, how to jump into this like he's been protecting, you know, and those words coming out for Luke is such a weird thing. And um <laughs> And uh, yeah, kind of diving into that aspect of things with him. And it, it came as a shock. It really did. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. It came as a shock for us. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it was uh, fun to play the whole entire, like, JJ now trying to redefine himself. Right. That's, yeah. That's part two, too. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, this is for both of you, but cool. what was your favorite scene to film this, like, just for part one, and why? Um, I think it's the Enduro. Um, the up there, motorcycle yeah. race, the end of the first episode, because it was like stunt heavy, but there's like good dialogue pieces, and there's a great moment with uh, John B and JJ, and then like John B and Sarah, and all the pogues are kind of like moving in this beautiful, chaotic moment. Um, and I think what is really special about the show is when you get all the characters in one space, and they all have these like interesting interactions together. Um, and it's just also fun when you have the whole cast together. Like we don't get that and haven't had that as much over the last season, season and a half. Um, so season four to get those moments a lot, obviously a lot in part one as well. Um, it's obviously a breath of fresh air. Absolutely. Part one, I would say the Enduro, I think, just like you said, yeah. having everyone there, not just yeah. everyone, like what, 300 plus extras mm -hmm. and like that, and it was freezing that energy, just oh. was <laughs> too fun. Yeah. Um, Part two, there's a, a, a sequence that I can't really share a whole lot, but there's a really fun thing of yeah. uh, JJ's. Super jealous. Yeah, that was, there's oh. this really, yeah. once it comes out, hopefully we can talk about it more, but there's, yeah. a, there's a dynamic thing that goes down. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like a, um, well, JJ going off the rails yet again. We'll just put it that way. Okay. It goes off right. the rails. <laughs> I think we, we've seen a chair th bit through, thrown through a window. I can talk about that. Yeah, that's in the trailer. Oh, yeah. Okay. That gets a little bit more elaborated on yeah. in part two. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see that part. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is also for both of you. You know, in season three, your characters, you get the El Dorado gold, yes. you know, and you have all this fortune after, you know, which creates Poglandia that we saw in part one. Right. So what I'm wondering is, if this happened to both of you in real life, mm -hmm. you get the gold and you have all this treasure, you have all this money, what would you do with it? Ooh. Maybe sort of like a food truck business. Ooh. <laughs> Buy a couple of food trucks and just go that okay. route. That's a good I didn't know you were into culinary. Would you love to yeah, chef it up that way? Okay. Cook. All right, chef. I just like support okay. yes, chef. small businesses <clears throat> and little chefs who are trying to make their way. I don't know. I just love food. And, and Is there a specific kind of food truck? Oh, um, no. I think I get options. You know, like maybe get like a right. sorbet truck, a mm. coffee truck, a little like taco truck start with sorbet that'd probably be pretty yeah. <laughs> there you go yeah, 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 yeah. Easy. uh let's go with starting a ski hill really oh starting a ski okay. hill on, yeah pacific northwest yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i'll bring one in my hometown i don't know if my hometown would like that but it might it might are you skier is that why i'm a boarder boarder yeah, okay a boarder, one okay. of those guys but yes i like worrying about one ski rather than two um yeah, that's what I was. All right. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and then this one is for you, Rudy. So JJ scuba dived this season. Mm -hmm. And I did hear, we both heard, that that was not a stunt double. 
Is that true, or did you do it? No, we we there were stunt doubles. There were stunt doubles. There were stunt okay, doubles. Okay. We, I was uh, I did get certified with uh, Scuba Joe. Mm -hmm. Scuba Joe and I, he took me okay. out. And, uh, I was able to have a great instructor, and uh, so yes, I did get certified. Okay. Um, but uh, no, there were also stunt doubles. Doing okay, stunt so you didn't weren't doing everything. No. But what was it like getting certified then and doing what you were able to do? Yeah, I mean. Honestly, what I loved about doing it was that, you know, just being with one other person down there, you kind of feel like you're kind of, with Scuba Joe, shout out to Scuba Joe, because he really did teach you really great, where he's like down there with you, and, he, and you're kind of nervous going down, and you're feeling like, okay, I need to remember a safety stop, because it is that serious of like, if you don't remember your safety stop, and you're going up too fast, it's kind of like, it's up to you to stop yourself. And, um, mm -hmm. Uh, it was very peaceful. I thought it was going to be very, um, everyone thinks it's very claustrophobic, but it's actually very open uh, yeah. and you feel um, not claustrophobic in your mask and stuff like that. You're very, it's very calming and very peaceful. Oh. So the show definitely shows it in a light of very stressful situations, but it's a very peaceful activity actually. Oh. And that's what he taught me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste underwater. Yeah. Um, so Chase, yes. John B is kind of at a crossroads yeah. at the end of part one. He's kind of wanting to settle down in Poglandia, mm -hmm. but he's always, you know, hunting for treasure. Sure. Um, where do you envision John B ending up like after all of the drama is over? Ooh, um, you know, it's, it's so interesting because the, the story of John B and the treasure hunt is like a very misinterpreted one. It was never about the treasure. It was always to find his dad. I mean, when you go back to the original three episodes of the first season, it was all to find his dad so that DCS doesn't take it to the mainland. And then it just unfolds into another thing, into another thing, and then supporting Pope and understanding the historical familial connection to the cross. And then, but even with El Dorado, it was, he heard the bells, which he knew was his dad. And then that took him on an entirely different journey that had really nothing to do with him besides wanting to connect with his father. And then once he's lost his father in the midst of this three season treasure hunt that he's been on, it rocks him to his core. It forces him to really go internal and say like, oh, wow, everything that I thought I was doing, which was right, which was the pursuit of my father and having this very terrible misinterpretation of him being this sort of great figure. And then we find out in the third season, he's really not a great dude. Um, it forces him to look at the things that he really wants and what were those things that he was chasing, which was just real life. And I think we see a lot of that in the first part of, of season four. It's it's him trying to like convince Sarah, like maybe he's come down and like we have a house here, but maybe we can expand on that and build our business. So I think for John B, this this version of him being considered a treasure hunter is something that he's really, really struggling to accept the identity with. Right. I guess um, kind of related to that, there's this kind of darkness that um, was shown briefly at the end of part one. Yes. Maybe he's becoming like his mm -hmm. father. How did you react to that development? Um, I think, you know, there's a duality to even what I was just talking about. Like you have your wants mm -hmm. and then you have like your biological sort of connection to certain things. And he is impulsive by nature, not to the extent of JJ, but um, <laughs> you know, like he is the son of his father. And he, um, I think he's trying to rewrite that family line. And in that moment where he pulls the gun on that guy and he chooses not to do it, it's sort of him actively realizing where he's making mistakes and trying to correct and sort of reroute his life. So I think that's sometimes in life, we have those inevitable realities where we're like, Yes. Just trying to calm down. Uh, Speaking of namaste. <laughs> um, uh, Who was it? But um, was but yeah, no. I think I think it's just like it's the internal battle that he's always going to face. Like, do I pursue? Do I not? Do I really want real life, or do I like the thrill? Um, I guess we'll see which one wins the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Um, so the viewership from Outer Banks has truly skyrocketed. I mean, I was thinking about it from season one to now. I mean, the, the viewership, the popularity, I mean, it's really blown up. Yeah. And um, I actually just saw that you guys were now in the global top 10, number one for like the second week in a row. Wow. Um, so how have you guys changed since the start of the show? You know, as mm -hmm. actors, as people, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, what's changed? What's changed? I think we're a little older now. Uh, pandemic's a little different. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think what it is is like when you grow up with a character, you actually are kind of like learning more and more about, you know, them, but also yourself and what values and stuff and what do you care about. And, you know, this was the introduction to our careers. And I think that's the biggest thing is that it's so fun seeing each castmate kind of come back and see where they have gone with their lives and like whatever they want to pursue. Like, I mean, so many give like, myself, it's theater for you is, you know, you've gone with all these awesome, cool other projects like that are like completely different. Cause Obi actually gets shot on location. Ugly is in a green box the entire time. <laughs> exploring, exploring that, like I have no idea and he gets to experience that. So it's always so fun to connect and talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think life is, is it's a, completely different version than what it was five years ago I mean, yeah. we got to charleston in april of 2019 we were just like bright-eyed and bushy-browed and ready to do any and everything mm -hmm. um and then the show worked and it's continued to work and so the ways that we operate in everything in every space of life has had to shift whether it's which grocery stores you go to or like you know where you go in public or where you go on dates with your partners like you have to be a little more aware of what you're doing because it can go from like a really beautiful personal like one-on-one -on -one experience with family members or your partner to then not having any connection with them because people are constantly coming up to you at like a dinner um so it's a blessing and a curse it's a beautiful thing because i think as artists you want people to connect with your work we've invested so much time into bringing a name on a piece of paper and bringing that to life and being so proud of the show and, and so thankful that people connect with it but also on the other side you lose your sense of anonymity and your ability to do some of the things that at one point in your life you're able to do so it's not a bad thing it's just a shift it's just you know there's so many people who go into this industry and never have those type of moments um so in the same space that sometimes you think twice about where you go you're kind of thankful that you do have to think about that because that means that it's it's worked. So yeah. it is a shift, but um, it's a shift in a yeah. good way. Always, always adapting. Yeah, always yeah. adapting. Absolutely. Um, so what should fans expect for part two? Ooh, that's a question. <laughs> that is a great question. Um, I think something about Outer Banks is we will never not shoot for the thrill. We will never ever have something that doesn't bump up the intensity and get crazy and get wild and put these kids in very abnormal situations um and so just like we've seen for three seasons it's you know we left the first part with a huge cliffhanger and um all of the characters are, are going through their own version of that so yeah all of it will be explored i um, think the word i would use is spiraling yes the spiraling yes. yes and then uh Writers always love to crank it up, and yeah. we say that every year, but yep. yet again more. this year, they do it again. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, spiraling. Spiraling in sand. Yes. Yes. Sand. Those are the two words. Yeah, like, it's you can look. see it. Yep, there it is. There, there's some right there. For sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe right there? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there's more. There's more. There's more. Oh, okay. Yeah. More, <laughs> sand, more sand than that, too. Right. Right. Sorry for the, the, the wardrobe and that. 